Okay, this is the implement that I'm going to be covering, and I'm just going to be doing the metal part here, and maybe a little ways up here. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the rust on it. I'm going to be using concrete mortar as my adhesive, and I don't anticipate a problem with adhesion on this piece. Okay, so I know that I want this icebreaker piece to have a chunky look to it. So the first thing I'm thinking is using this as the edging. It's got a chip here. I think this is a red wing, but I'm not 100% sure. But having to cut through this ridge might be a little bit difficult. So let me grab my nippers and see what happens here. Yeah, see, I'm not going to be able to get purchase on the edge there. So, I'm going to have to get the hammer out. And I need to at least get it cut in half so that I can go in from the rough part instead of from the edge. So, I'm going to turn it like this with the lid thing facing up and just give it a whack. That did it. And here we go. And the knob is intact, pretty much, so I can use that for something. Okay, so I'm going to try this this way. That was extremely difficult, and I don't want to do that too many more times because of my hand problem. There we go. That's pretty good. Okay. So that is the blue. Very interested also in this yellow piece. And when I do my mosaics, I never try to stay, I never try to cut them apart and then put them back together the way that they were. I like to cut them apart and spread them around or arrange them in a different way in my mosaic, but that is only a matter of personal style. And these are super easy to break. Okay, and then I've got more yellow here. If you've been watching my videos, you're probably know all about my little donkey cart here. I've used most of it on other things. I've got this cool little, I don't really care for that brown, but this yellow here is gorgeous. Um, I've got, I'd like to put some flowers on it. So I've got these little things which are a little, I don't know, insipid, but I might go for those pink ones there. Okay, so I'm going to put this in this little baggie here, and I'm just going to tap it. And from there, you can easily extract whatever you want. I would be more careful with the leaves if I liked the leaves, but I don't on this particular piece. They're, they're a ugly shade of green. Okay, so I think some of those will look real nice. Okay, so I came across this in my shard bin, and it was just a broken figurine, but look at the beautiful texture on that and that beautiful color of pink. 
So I'm just going to barely tap this one. And then I might just leave that part there for now. Maybe cut it down a little bit more. I have so little room on this icebreaker that I really need to make use of it. And then I also found this in my workroom. And it's funny how you can remember these. This is from a Shawnee planter. And I love that, here, the way the pink goes into yellow and over here into blue. So I'm gonna just get that a little bit cut up. Maybe leave that much. The okay, so this flower is too big for that. It's actually too big for anything that I do. So, but I do love the petals. So I'm gonna just try and save some of these petals here. Very, very sharp. So I have one, at least one beautiful petal here I can use on that. So this is what I've got so far. It's getting, it's, I'm getting an awful lot of stuff, but of course I have to have leaves. So I have a little stash of leaves that I like. Next I have this, and if you saw my promo video, you'll remember that this is what I broke in that video. And it's just, uh, a long time ago I might have put this whole piece onto a big huge mirror, but I'm not doing anything like that now, but I would like to save one or two of the flowers and some of those beautiful leaves. So I'm going to continue with my breaking of this thing. I don't know. There we go. But these edges are still so sharp. I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to use that. But I can definitely use these leaves if I can get them removed from this thing here. Or I could use it whole. I'm gonna just hang on to that for a while. I'll try to get this yellow one out. There we go. This is a piece that I found in the neighbor's yard when I was looking for my cat. You always want to keep your eye on the ground. I don't think this is an old piece, but it's an awfully pretty color of green, so I'll wash that up and show you how I cut that. Okay, so these flowers are soaking in a mixture of vinegar and water try to get the grime out of them and I still don't know whether they're going to make the cut for this icebreaker project or not. Um, so this green here this does not look like anything old. It looks like a planner that someone probably got at the nursery or something. Then, I always go through my miscellaneous shards when I'm doing a project in case I missed anything cool. And, okay, so here, that could go. I have so many whites. I've got, I found this purple flower, so I'm wanting to do something eventually with it. Or, 
it could be considered for the icebreaker. I just don't know yet. Here's a good chunky edge piece. Here's one I love from an old uh, Shawnee planter, this crazed yellow. I wish I had more of that. Just sort of throw everything out and let the shards tell you what to do. We have construction going on in the yard next door. If you hear a lot of noise, that's what that is. This is beautiful stuff. This is Bavaria. And I don't know if you can see the blue tint here. I've used a lot of Bavaria. Then I have some odds and ends here that I might just fool around with a little bit. This needs to be soaked. Um, a coin. It's fun to put coins in things. A little dog. I might try to hide him in there somewhere. Some sea glass that my sister brought me from California. That would look really pretty in there. I like to have one square thing in a mosaic. There's some cute little metal hearts that I might be able to do something cool with. Always nice to have a little blue willow in a piece. And I would like to use some of these metal balls, but I don't know, I don't remember if they adhere with mortar or not. So that's kind of up in the air. And then things like this are really too lazy, lacy to grout because the grout gets in there and it just loses its appeal. But I might use that, dangle it from the handle or something another tiny coin and a little couple of little leaf pieces a little pink bead and a little bit of red I just like to do a little bit of red uh, shiny rhinestone pieces I don't think so for this piece but I will probably use a tiny bit of mirror And I have some of this edging, too, that I'll use. This is more of that lusterware stuff that's just so gorgeous. Okay, it is now order from chaos time. And I've said before, I don't plan my designs out in advance, but I do try to get a bit of a feel for how much I can use and how much has to be saved for something else. This thing here, definitely. These things, I just don't think I'm going to be able to use those thick rim pieces. They're too, I want clunky, but not that clunky. Okay, so I want to try to find plate edges and soft pieces to go around the edge so that I don't have to do as much grinding in the end. I'm lazy. Hi, Louie. Oh, the mailman's here. Okay. So, um, I'm going to have to think about this for a while. Okay, now we're going to start with the mortar adhesive, and it doesn't matter to me what brand you use, just so long as it is thin-set mortar. I'm starting with one cup of mortar. I think I'll add, I just eyeball this stuff. Um, I'm going to add another half a cup. Try to find the kind of mortar that says just add water so you don't have to use an additive. And then I don't want the mortar to be white. I want it a real soft brown, so I'm just going to do a little bit of mixing here. yellow, brown, and a little bit of gold metallic paint. 
And then I'm going to just start mixing up. I'll see if I can keep track of the measurements here. Starting with a fourth of a cup, maybe not even that much. That is a little bit watery. I'm going to put just a tad more mortar in it. You want the consistency to be such that this fork will stand up with no problem. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now, ordinarily, I would work on this a little bit at a time, but it's rainy and damp here this morning, so I'm going to go ahead and cover the whole thing. Okay, let's stabilize this. Be sure to get it all spread out to the edges. Okay, this is the first piece I want in, and I think it's going to need some more mortar, so I'm going to add some right there. Okay, I just realized we want this, this piece is going to hang, so this is going to be up. So I actually want this piece down here and just kind of give it a little bit of a twist. Okay, then I'm gonna put this in so that these two pieces support each other. And then the first of my little objects here, I love this <clears throat> round copper bead. Coming in here with my favorite little yellow pieces. I'm gonna hide my little doggy under here. Oh wait, it should be facing up. So maybe better right here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. If 
I love these green leaves. Now these <clears throat> rim pieces weren't in my first videos. Um, this is a beautiful blue plate that I came across in my stash and the story on that is in another video. And the beauty of this adhesive is that you can set thin shards not as deep down as the thicker shards. I don't know if that makes any sense. Maybe you can just see what I'm doing here. I'm going to put the coin in here. And then I'm going to put my square piece right here. Little bit of red. My beautiful crazed Shawnee planter piece. I have tried to speed this film up a little bit because it's such a long video, but this just is not My a five minute craft pieces. type thing. Not too much mirror now because that can make a thing look a little bit contrived. You want it just so it just barely picks up the light. Now you don't have to stay within the lines of your piece. I could have things sticking out from the edges, but it just so happens that I really like the shape of this thing, so I want to keep that shape.
if you get any of this mastic on any of your pieces, be sure to get it cleaned off fast. Be sure that your large pieces are supported well by smaller pieces. And I'm not sure whether I'm going to grout this or not. I might just leave it as is. <clears throat> and that will make it have that really true grotto look. Okay, so that looks pretty good to my eye. I'm going to turn off the camera now, and then uh, I'll show you in a little bit. I'll probably turn it around a few times and look at it real closely. Maybe even take a picture of it and look at the picture. Sometimes that gives you, for some reason shows you every little flaw. Okay, so here's the final product and it does need a little bit more cleaning up. And I do think I might grout it, but I'm just not sure. Anyway, thank you for joining me and I'll see you at the next project.